Hello class. Uh, this is one of my favorite lectures really to do. It's I think one of the most <clears throat> important uh, different analysis techniques to uh, use. And in fact, um, uh, I've always used this more, much more than nodal analysis. Uh, I don't really know anybody who really uses it. I mean, no, we're gonna need nodal analysis when we do an analysis of op amps because the front end of an op amp has literally infinite resistance, so no current flows in there, and we're gonna need nodal analysis to, to analyze that. But what I wanted to do with mesh analysis, this, this mesh analysis, is just get the procedure down. And in your book, uh, you know, it goes through steps on mesh analysis and what you, uh, would, how you would do mesh analysis. But like I said before, the uh, way that they do the summation um, as they work through a mesh analysis loop, I'm just drawing the mesh analysis loops right now. And you'll notice that they, they have to be in the same direction, right? So I've got all the loops going in the same direction as, as I sum the various different uh, voltage increases and decreases as I go through that loop. And uh, that's what I wanna do. First of all, I wanna sum all of the voltages as I go through the loop. So let's make a procedure. So one, sum all voltage increases or decreases around the loop. See how um, mesh analysis takes advantage of uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law, whereas nodal analysis takes advantage of Kirchhoff's current law, right? And that's basically what we're doing here now. We're trying to come up with two independent equations here that are going to relate to I1, because I'm gonna call this uh, I1, and this is loop I2, right? Uh, you know, should I really say I1 and I, you know, because I'm gonna use I1 and I2 I, I uh, in those. Let's just look at the, oh, you know, I forgot to put the voltage source for that one. No, no, I got it. Two volts, six volts, two ohms, four ohms, one ohm. I'm going to do it with a, with a very easy two loop circuit first. And then we're going to jump into a three loop where it's really much more beneficial. I mean, with this, we don't have to use matrices to solve this really, do we? Although we could, and I probably will. Uh, but with the three loop circuit, you really have to use uh, matrix operations to solve that. So let's just do a simple two loop, easily using substitution algebra to, to figure out what's going on here. So let's do a summation first of loop one. I'll call this loop one, I'll call this loop two. So if we do an analysis, and I'm doing this, you know, opposite, uh, like I said before, uh, I do it the conventional way, your book sort of does it in an unconventional, everything that's positive is negative, everything that's negative is positive. The way I look at it is if I have a minus here and I've got a plus here, I'm going from the negative side to the positive side, so that's an increase of two volts. And so that's how I sum it. So two volts, right, and then, uh, what have I, I got here as far as voltage? Doesn't V equal IR equals delta V, that voltage drop across the resistor? So I know that the voltage drop across the resistor is gonna be IR, right? And that's a, that's a subtraction because really I, I'm going from the plus to the minus here. So I'm losing voltage going across that two ohm resistor. And I know that my current in, in that is gonna be I1, right? I said that I'll use I1 in this loop and I2 in this loop. So minus I1 times two ohms. That's a two. <laughs> and then let's go over to the four ohm now. Now, now minus, that's gonna be a voltage drop across the four ohm, but there isn't just one current flowing through there, is there? No, there's one current that's flowing through that's I1, and there's another current flowing in the opposite direction called I2. So I now have 
I1 minus I2 times four ohms. Do we see any other voltage increases or decreases as we go around this loop? No. So we know that that has to equal zero, right? Now, now I'm just gonna put this one next to it because uh, it'll be easier for us to simplify as we, we're going down to, to get to that point. So let's do the second one as well. Um, I'll start here just like I did last time. So I go up here and the first one I run into is this four ohm resistor. Now, when I'm looking at it in this loop here, the, the I2 is going this way, isn't it? And the I1 is going this way. So this is gonna be I2 minus I1. So when I do that, that thing, the first thing that I've got is minus four ohms times I2 minus I1. Now we go around the top, the only current flowing through the one ohm resistor, right? Minus one ohm is just going to be I2. Right? And now when we come down to the six volts, we're going opposite to the six volts, right? This is positive, that's negative. So instead of it being a positive six volts, it's gonna be a minus six volts. And we know that that whole thing equals zero volts, right? So we've got two equations now that both equal zero volts. Why don't we, we solve these uh, a little bit? So I've got, let's just do it with um, the two ohms or, or with uh, I1 first. So I get minus two ohms I1 minus four ohms I1. Can we take that minus two ohms and that minus four ohms I1 and throw it on the other side? Sure, you know, to make it a positive. So that would make it plus, four plus two is six ohms I1, right? And then I'm gonna put the two volts over on this side of the equation. So the two volts basically is staying on the left-hand side of the equal sign, and I'm taking this and this and bringing it over to the other side so it becomes a positive. I'm also gonna do that, if you look at this, I've got a minus, a minus I2. So does that make it positive I2? Positive I2 over to the other side gives me minus four ohms I2. And all of that equals two volts, all right? We could put some parentheses, I guess, around the ohms there, right? So that we separate out the I2 and then we've got equals two volts. If I do the same thing for over here, getting I1, I2 all lined up, let's just put that line down there. Uh, let's try this then. So I've got minus four ohms I2, minus one ohm I2. Why don't we take that over to the other side of the equation and those minuses will become positives, right? And how about I1? What are we gonna have for I1? Now I've got a minus four ohms times a minus I1. So doesn't that make it plus four ohms, right, times I1, and then uh, minus, uh, I'm just doing minus minus so that we, I might have to do two steps here for, I don't want to lose anybody. So I get four, uh, uh, four ohms I1 minus four ohms I2 minus one ohm I2, that gives me minus five ohms I2, right? And then what does that equal? Well, I think we can see I've kept all of the things on this side. So I've still got the positive, positive. I could take that six ohm, that minus six and bring it to the other side of the equation, which would give me a plus six volts. Does everybody see that? So now I've got two equations. Two equations. 
And I really have two unknowns too, don't I? I've got I1 and I2, two equations, two unknowns. Can't we just throw that into a, a matrix? Couldn't I say that I have six ohms minus four ohms, right? Let's put our solution column down there too, equals two volts. And I also have, if I go to this, I have four ohms um, <clears throat> I1 minus five ohms I2. I probably wrote this wrong. Gives me six volts. I uh, just want to make sure I've got this everything right. Zim, zim, dun, 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 minus four ohms. Yep, equals two volts. And uh, I probably should have brought those over to the other side, making that a minus and that a plus, and that would be a uh, that would still be a minus and minus and you know. Uh, mm, I could do that, but it, it, it comes out to the same thing either way. It's just two equations, two unknowns. I've got a matrix here. I've got my solution column to the matrix here. And of course, via, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, the solution to a two by two matrix, and I'm just going to draw this up here, although I think everybody probably knows this is A, B, C, D. If I want to find the determinant of that, that would be A, D minus B, C, right? Does everybody re remember that? And if I, if I had a two by two matrix like that, and I wanted to find out if you don't know this, you should have learned this in math, but if you don't know this, if you <laughs> wanted to find out what I1 and I2 uh, are, is we can just actually uh, replace I1's column with the solution column and find the determinant for that, divided by the determinant of the entire thing. So let's do the determinant. Let's, let's find out what is the determinant of, uh, six minus four, four minus five, right? What's the determinant for that? So let's just work this out first. Again, we're gonna use it for the two to find out I1 and I2, but we, we have to find this matrix first because this goes in the denominator. So if I use my equation I've got over here, A times D, so minus 30, right? So I'm, I'm finding the determinant of this two by two matrix. So minus 30 minus a minus 16, right? So minus 30 plus 16 gives me minus 14, right? Okay, so we know the determinant of that equals that. Now, now I also want to find out, I'll, put, I'll just put that there. I also want to find out, since I'm trying to find I1, I1 then, because I1 is the first column, I would replace with my um, solutions column, two, six, minus four, minus five. And I would divide that by the one I have here, six, minus four, four, minus five. Okay, and we know the answer to that already, but let's do the top. So I've got two times minus five, which gives me minus 10, and then minus a minus 24. Does everyone see that? Six times minus four is, is 24. I'll just put brackets around there. So I've got 24 minus 10 or 14. And on the bottom, I have minus 14, right? So I've got 14 over minus 14, which gives me minus one amp. Now let's do the other side. Let's do I2. So I2, all I would do is replace the second column with the solutions column. So that gives me six, four, uh, four, 
I, I don't really need that line or anything. I don't know why I put that line there. It almost makes it look like it's, uh, there we go. Okay, so I've got six and four, and then I'm gonna replace the second column with the solutions column. And the solutions column is two and six. And I divide it by the original one that we have, six, uh, I'll still put it down there, six minus four, four minus five, right? And so now I know the bottom is 14, is, is minus 14, right? But the top, six times six is 36. Let's put a 36, right? Minus eight. 36 minus eight is 28. 28 divided by minus 14 is minus two amps. Now, I'm pretty sure that all of that's right, but I'm just going to put a line below that for a second. Um, I'm just gonna check something and I wanna get the, the other one. Hopefully we have enough time to do the three by three or at least start the three by three. All right, class, I, I am back. I hope that everybody, um, I was just a minute or so. I just wanted to set up, oh, got the wrong pen. Oh my God, I left the top off it. Um, I just wanted to set up our uh, three by three. Of course, this is gonna be, this is very easy. Two by two matrices are very easy. The introduction to mesh analysis is very easy. Uh, it becomes a little more difficult when we go from a two by two matrix to a three by three matrix. And I wanna teach you a trick that I use in a three by three matrix too. So, so let, let me just draw this uh, circuit first uh, so that we can get started on our mesh analysis. This is like I say, a three loop circuit rather than a two loop circuit. Um, it's still not what I would call a really complicated uh, circuit. You could probably, you know, use your branch um, current methods to, you know, work through something like this, although it, it would not be uh, very straightforward. Whereas the mesh analysis method is very straightforward uh, as far as the solution goes. We just sum the voltages going around the individual circles. I wanna give you some um, numbers. That's 10 ohms. This is eight ohms. This is five ohms. I could use realistic things. I just really want to show you now. If when I give you um, uh, tests or whatever, I, I, I certainly will uh, use real numbers, not so much on the home sets because those are out of the book, but on tests I'll use, uh, you know, like 330 or 560 or, you know, but the standard. Now we know a couple of things. We know down here, this is gonna be equal to zero, right? And we know that this is 15 volts. So I know that right here, I've got 15 volts, don't I? So I think everybody can see that we could still do some analysis, uh, uh, you know, without, uh, extending into that, we could use other ways to, to find out certain aspects of this, but the easiest way, well, you know, you also probably thought, hey, you know, you draw your, you drew these backwards, right? If you had drawn them the other way, this would have come out as positive one amp and positive two amps. Why'd you draw it this way? That's my convention, right? As long as I'm drawing them all in the same direction, I could draw it uh, uh, counterclockwise, counterclockwise, uh, you know, in all three of them, but I like to draw it clockwise. And that is pretty much the standard convention of most people. It doesn't matter which way you go around the circuit, uh, just so long as you, you know, go in the same direction <laughs> all the ways, or at least keep that all, all straight when you're working it out. I find that putting them all in the same direction is, is required but uh, I'm not sure what the reason is for that. I'd have to go into that and, and, and look at it. It's with all the other things going on in electrical engineering, that uh, is a very <laughs> minor aspect of what you'll do. In fact, you'll find out that a lot of what you'll be designing in the future is going to be things that you can, you know, just throw up on a simulator. And then uh, that simulator also has a way to design a printed circuit board for you and a full layout of this printed circuit board. 
so that you could you know, make a, make a small, very compact printed circuit board of the circuit that you wanted to do. That's the future. And I think that's going to be happening all over the place and rationalization using um, designer software. All right, we're not at that point. You're not at that point yet, you're at this point. And this point is uh, learning how to do mesh analysis on a three loop circuit. Let's start, right? Let's sort of start and just sort of see what, what we have here. Let's start with, uh, I'll make that, that has got to be the easiest uh, one of all. And then I'll call that number two and I'll call this loop three. So let's go through our analysis uh, of our three equations as we go around the loop. Now that's the minus side, that's the plus side. So the way that I uh, sum that is I'm gonna say that's 15 volts. I call that 15 volts, even though your, your, your text uh, does it backwards. The, the standard convention is really to say that you're going from negative to positive, it's 15. Now I'm gonna have a voltage drop here at eight, right? Um, so uh, I don't know how to stop that. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm not answering that, but uh, it might just go on for a while. So let's look at the voltage drop that I've got right here. I'm going to call the, uh, just a second. All right, class, I'm uh, back. That was, uh, friend of mine that's just going through a divorce and stuff and so I thought well I better answer that phone before uh, he tells me he's going to kill himself. <laughs> I know many of you are not married uh, and I certainly hope that, that all of you are not divorced. <laughs> so you know that'll be friends that you meet in the future. I'm hopeful and uh, hopefully you'll never meet them. You know, I mean you'll never know anybody that's divorced or never get divorced yourself. So having said that, I have set it up for 15 minutes again. And so let's uh, do this three loop um, uh, circuit that we've got here. So first thing we've got from the, from the minus to the plus, I say is positive 15 volts. Let's do the eight ohms now. Well, we've got two currents flowing through, right? We've got I1 that's flowing that way, but we have I3 that's flowing that way. So minus eight ohms, right, times I1 minus I3. I don't think I've lost anybody there. And then here, I think everybody can see that this is sharing the current of I1 flowing this way, and then I2 flowing that way. So they're flowing in opposite directions too. So it'd be I1 minus I2. So minus, three ohms, I sub one minus I sub two. All right, and then we've got the last one down here, we've got nothing, so that equals zero. Well, that's our first one that we've got right there. Now let's, let's do the second one. Second one over here is I two. So if I start at the bottom again, I'm going to have minus three ohms, right? But now it's I2 minus I1, right? Because I2 is going in that direction, but I1 is coming in the opposite direction. Same thing is true here. We've got I2 flowing that way, but we have I3 flowing this way. <clears throat> so it's another minus. It's going to be minus 5 ohms times I2 minus I3. And then the last one here, the two ohm is just going to be minus two ohms, but the only thing that we have flowing through it is I2, right? And then all of that equals zero. That's two ohms. So that's two of our three equations. So it's two of the three simultaneous equations. I know what you're saying to yourself right now. Oh my God, this is what I learned matrix uh, determinants for. So solution of matrix and linear algebra. That's right. That's exactly what you learned it for. Let's do the third one now. Well, the third one, we're, we're very similar to two. We don't really have a voltage source in there at all, but we do have uh, things that, that are falling. So I've got, I'll start out uh, right here. So that would be minus, I'm going to try to give myself some, some room, uh, minus 
eight ohms, right? And then times I3 minus I1. And then I've got minus 10 ohms, right? And the only thing flowing through that is I3. And then with the five ohms, I've got minus five ohms. And the two currents flowing through that are I3 minus I2. I3 minus I2. And that all equals zero, right? So we've got three equations now. I want to simplify those three equations in terms to, so that I can put them into a three by three matrix. So let's do that with these. So the first thing I want is uh, I1. Everything has got I1. So I've got minus eight I1 minus three ohms I1. That's minus 11 ohms I1. So minus 11 ohms I1. How about I2? Well, I've got minus three ohms, and then I've got minus I2. So that would be plus three ohms times I2, right? How about I3? Well, I have eight ohms, or minus eight ohms times minus I3. So that gives me plus eight ohms I3. And what does that equal? That equals, well, this is 15 volts. So it's going to be minus 15 volts because I've kept all those on the left-hand side. And I brought the 15 over to the right-hand side. So it becomes a negative, right? Now let's do the same thing I've got here. Now let's go through I1. So I've got plus 3I1 plus, uh, nope, that's it. So 3 ohms I1. How about I2? Well, I've got two of them I have to do. I've got, I've got minus 5I2 minus 3I2, which gives me minus 8 ohms I2. Let's do I3. Oh, wait. Oh, wait a second. It looks like I've left something out. Ba -ba -ba, well, minus uh, 2. That should be minus 10. I'm sorry about that. I forgot the two entirely. Uh, and then let's do three. So that's going to be plus five ohms I3. And what does that equal? Zero still, right? Now let's do our last one down here. We want to do the same things. I1, I2, I3. So I've got eight ohms I1. We can do this a bit faster, can't we? Because now I've got minus five times minus I2, so it's pl uh, uh, yeah, plus five ohms I2. And then I3, we have in all three of them, minus eight, minus 10, that gives me minus 18, minus five. That's minus 23, isn't it? So minus 23. I3 equals zero. All right. Now let's let let's make our. Uh, I think we can use this e either one. So I've got minus eleven, three, eight, minus fifteen. How about the next one? I've got three minus 10, five, zero. Do the last one, eight, five, minus 23, zero. All right, does everybody see the three by three matrix that I've got? You know, let's just solve for that three by three matrix that I have there. I'm just going to put a little arrow there uh, and say that minus 11, 3, 8, 3, minus 10, 5, 8, 5, minus 23, the determinant of that. Ah, let's just, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. I just want to make sure that uh, I've got this right. Just so, let me check something. 
Yeah, everything's uh, exactly right. But what I what I um, wanted to do was to show you how we would do this. That takes some time, but I'm going to to actually do it anyway. Uh, the way I do this is I take this one right here, and then I multiply it by these two. In fact, I, I, I'd love to draw you a picture of how I'm going to do this. And I'm trying to find a spot on here. You know, I think I'm just gonna have to write it down here. So if I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, in a three by three matrix, the way that I do that is I put another two rows. See how, see how it's got A, D, G, B, E, H, C, F, I. I'm just going to get rid of that entirely. What I do is I always write another two rows, the, the two rows, the two original rows, A, D, G, B, E, H. That's, this is how I do it. Now you're going to say, well, that's not how they taught us in math. And of course it's not because <laughs> <clears throat> Math, mathematicians are so such geniuses, right? But here's how I do it. So I, I circle the first one, and then I make that first. So I know it's A times E, F, H, I. Then I do plus, because I'm moving to the right, right? So I'm going to take another color pen here. Uh, I'll use the, the, the orange. So now it's B, right? And it's going to be this and this. So we can just add those instead of subtracting like they do in math, and that, that all makes it so confusing. We're just going to add them as we go across. So B, and now the matrix that we're using is F, D, I, G. F, D, I, G. By the way... <laughs> Students have come back to me and told me that this is a, a, a much easier way to make sure that you get the determinants for a three by three right. Uh, so I have, I've had had a, a great response with the way that I do it. Now with C, you see why I have now moved these over? Because C now is just going to use those and it's still a plus. I don't have to transpose these like they teach you in math or anything. Right, makes it so hard. So it's D E G H. And that equals the determinant of the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, three by three matrix, right? Okay, so we can do the same thing here. If we wanted to find out what the determinant is, that would just be minus 11 times the minus 10, five, five, minus 23 matrix plus, let's just keep moving it over. So it would be three times the matrix. Now, now we come down here, right? It'd be five, three, minus 23, eight, right? So five, three, minus 23, eight. And then plus, let's do the last one, eight, right? And then eight would just use these, three minus 10, eight, five, right? So that's where we are with that. And we would solve each of those individually and we would have the matrix for that. You know, I'm going to stop this here. I'm going to finish this up in the next, next lecture. We're almost done with this. And SuperMesh uh, actually is a shorter lecture usually anyway. So I'm going to finish this up in the next lecture. And then we're also going to touch on SuperMesh, which is very similar to SuperNodal. All right. Um, I've sort of run out of, run out of room a little bit here, but we're going to work this out. And I want, I want this to be, you know, worked on a little more detail. We've, We've certainly introduced mesh analysis. We've certainly showing how it's going to extend into the third uh, loop as well. Uh, we want to learn this <clears throat> so that, you know, two, well, that's easy. And we can probably solve that without even using mesh analysis. But, but down here with three, there's, there's several different types of uh, circuits where I really have to use mesh analysis. I can't use 
a current divider rule, a KVL, KCL, that I can't solve the problem. I've got to use mesh analysis. So <clears throat> I will see you in the next lecture. We'll finish up this example uh, and we'll also move on to super mesh analysis.